most of the rosters of these trainers and Wolf leading out with Reggie Alecki and Glastia, two of those new faces. What a delight to see them out in the action as Glastia and Grimmsnarl are being led out for Donald. And, you know, two of these Glastia Pokemon out at the moment, both of them like Trick Room environments and depending on how they have been trained, um, obviously we're going to have to find out which one has the speed advantage depending on what the speed of the environment is. And Reggie Alecki is just so happy to be here, Lee. Yeah, and it's interesting how both players are approached this first turn. You know, we commonly see Regilecki uh, support its partnering Pokemon with things like Light Screen and Reflect, which is exactly what you would see, something like the Grim Snarl and what we saw it do for Donald in yesterday's match. So both players going with the same idea, just a little different approach. And the Regilecki probably in a bit more of a, a, an awkward position than the Grim Snarl here, more likely to get knocked out. But we still don't know the item on that Regilecki on Wolf side of the field. So it, it may have something like the Focus Act, which will allow a little bit of room to support his own Glastria. And it's going to be the battle of the, the Glastria has gone into this first turn. <laughs> Yeah, well, Glastria on Donald's side going to be straight away Dynamaxing in this match and going for the Reflect with the Grim Snarl. So just boosting up the defenses on Donald's side of the field wants to make sure that there is a little bit more protected as Reggie Alecki pivots out going for that Volt Switch. And this does allow Wolf the opportunity to bring a Pokemon in from the back that might be able to better support the Glastria here in this environment. We know that the Reflect is up on the field, maybe bringing in something like a Special Attacker could be dealing some good damage or indeed the Dust Gloves, I was about to say. That's who is arriving on the field to be able to obviously apply some pressure with its ability but potentially set up that trick room as well Glastria going to go for the close combat on Wolf's side taking the Glastria that's Dynamax down to below 50% of course the risk here for Wolf though is the defenses of his own Glastria has been reduced as Glastria on Donald's side going for that Max Quake going to target down into the Dust Corps that has just joined the field going to be able to take that much better than the Reggie Alecki would have but again Donald trying to boost up defenses has now got a special defense boost on the Glastria and the Grim Snarl. So potentially as we're going into the match, these are things that Wolf needs to consider. Yeah, and I think what Donald is going to have to do now is really start to make and uh, maximize his turns with this Glastria on his side of the field. He has decided to Dynamax at turn one. So he needs to start getting a return on it. And how Wolf is playing right now, the Glastria is likely to switch out on his side of the field, like you mentioned, with that close combat. It was a really nice play, getting some big damage off into the Dynamax Glastria on Donald's side. But at the same time, those defense drops are really going to make it very vulnerable going into this next turn, potentially in range of a knockout. And it's something you probably, if you're Wolf, you want to get off the field, reset those drops and maybe reposition with something next to it. So it's about whether or not Donald can read into that and maybe take advantage of it, or if he goes for a different route. Yeah, I like this play here by Wolf, bringing the Tapafini into the action, resetting the drops on the Glastria, setting the Misty Surge out on the field. And of course, the other thing you have to be concerned about if you're Wolf is you don't necessarily want to set up Trick Room while Donald's Glastria is still in the action. You want to try and remove it potentially before going for that Trick Room. Uh, light Screen going to come up here from the Grim Snarl. Again, keeping the defensive really strong as Glastria goes for that Max Hailstorm. It is going to go down into the Dust Glops. Um, going to do a huge chunk of damage, not enough to be able to kick, um, pick up the KO, though, of course, the residual damage from that hail is going to make the HP on the Dusclops dwindle even further, but it should still be able to survive out the turn as Dusclops goes for a haze. I haven't seen this in a long time here, Lee. Just going to be able to remove all of those stat boosts that Donald has worked so hard to build up um, with the max moves coming out from the Glastria. Yeah, it's an interesting option on the Dusclops and, and interesting that Wolf doesn't want to go for that Trick Room here. He had a great opportunity to go for it and then the next turn maybe go for the Haze, but obviously opting not to go down that route. Now he gets the Tapu Fini onto the field and that's extremely good for him because he's removed that special defense boost that the Glastria had just obtained with that Max Quake the previous turn. Tapu Fini in a nice position here where it can pressure the Grim Snarl. It can even go for a Calm Mind if it wishes here to, to get boosted up and then set himself up for a, a nice position after the, the Dynamax turns ends on this Glastria to start Dynamaxing and do some damage of his own. Tapu Fini going for the Dazzling Gleam, just getting a little bit of split chip damage against both of Donald's Pokemon. He's going to have to take a st Spirit Break, however, the special attack will be dropping down. Um, so unless Dusclops is able to survive and go for another Haze, that is still going to be in effect at the end of the turn. But Dusclops not going to be able to be as lucky, unfortunately. The Max Quake coming in from the Glastria are going to be able to pick up the KO. Special defense boosts are going to be reset on the field for Donald. And of course, the Chilling Nay ability will activate as well. So the Glastria is going to be even more threatening going into this next turn with its attack boost. The one thing you have to watch out for though if you're Donald is the HP is dwindling on that Glastria and you know Dynamax coming to an end it's going to be sitting a little bit vulnerable particularly outside of this Trick Room environment. 
Definitely outside of the Trick Room, it's not its most favoured environment at all, and I think Wolf's really played this quite well. May have a faster Glastria, it depends who's got the faster one, you know, not opting for the Trick Room here, there might be some sort of more speed in one than the other, so uh, it'll be interesting to see which Glastria is faster here, but definitely the one on Donald's side of the field, and a little bit of an awkward position now, definitely in knockout range from probably both the Tapu Fini and the Glastria deciding whatever moves they want to go for, even though they've got that screen support from the Grimstall. The Grimstall on Donald's side has been allowed to just kind of freely do it at once here, so firing off the Spirit Breaks into the Tapu Fini is a nice way to kind of mitigate it, but it's a nice way for Wolf to kind of keep that Grimstall busy while he maybe does something else, but uh, we see that just clubs come in for Donald as he does preserve that Glastria for later on in this game. Yeah, Glastria just hanging out in the back for later. Spirit Break going to connect into that Tapu Fini once again, lowering the special attack even further as these turns do progress as Glastria goes for the high horsepower. Coming in fresh from Wolf's side, you know, doesn't have the drops that it had previously. Life Orb obviously on there as well, going to be dealing that extra little bit of damage, but Dusclops just so, so bulky, able to easily take that as the Hail Ship as well is going to deal its damage. But I think it's an interesting position with Donald here now. He can potentially try and get that Trick Room up um, and have the Glastria in the back sitting a little bit happier if it rejoins the field. Yeah, but then when you are setting the Trick Room up for your own Glastria, but you're kind of in effect setting it up for uh, your opponent as well, because the problem is setting the Trick Room up, even if Wolf's Glastria is a little bit faster than yours, he's still got access to his Dynamax, and mm. that is that, that could be where the issue lies and maybe might put Donald off, but if it feels like it's his only route to go down here, then he'll have to try and get that set up on this turn. That is true, you forgot the Wolf had access still to that Dynamax, you know, keeping it late game can be so critical in so many strategies. You still have access sort of towards the end of a game to get that extra HP, those extra KOs that sometimes you really need to dig deep to achieve, and Dynamax allows you to be able to achieve that with ease. Grim's not going to go for the Sucker Punch, of course Glastria easily going to be able to take that, and we'll follow up with a Max Knuckles, we're going to target down into that Grim Snarl pick up the KO, and I really like this play here by Wolf, getting the attack boost from the Max Knuckle, but also Chilling Ney, of course, going to activate and boost up as well. Reggie Alecki, having joined the field relatively safely, um, is, of course, going to be able to apply pressure as well, as long as Trick Room doesn't come off here from the Dusclops. If it does, this is an environment that Reggie Alecki's not going to be happy to be in at all, and that's actually what Donald has gone for here. So Trick Room is in effect. The Glastier on Wolf's side is going to be very, very happy with that. Yeah, extremely happy with that. But you do wonder as well, we've already seen Haze on one Dusclop, so we're going to see it on another Dusclop. And Ooh. that's potentially something that could disrupt Wolf's Glastria. But at the same time, it will come down to, you know, that I was about to say what, what Donald brings in to make the most of this trick room, and it is going to be the Glastria on his end. Now, the problem is right here, it can do some damage to Wolf's opposing Glastria, of course, but at the same time, it's so low health. Itself. It's 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 really going to get knocked out if it takes a single attack from the Regieleki or the Glastria. The decisions are really split here, and I, I don't know if you can really afford to leave either of these Pokemon alone. And we'll set up a really dominant, like a very dangerous board position here, and it's it's kind of splitting your attention here Wh which side do you go for do you do you go for the glastria that's a dynamax prevent those chilling nays which might not be a bad idea and if you do have something like haze here with the dusclops that's spending a turn where you're not getting any damage off and you're kind of then relying on your own glastria to do as much damage as possible if it is slow which we don't know yet well, Wolf preserving the precious Reggie Alecki, you know, wanting to get it out of there, doesn't want it to take any damage, maybe keeping it for later in the game. And, oh, you called it there, Lee. There's, if there's a Haze on one Dusclops, it's going to be on the other one as well, eliminating those stat boosts that the Glastria had previously. Tapu Fini going to take the high horsepower that was aiming for that Reggie Alecki. It will, of course, sacrifice itself. And Glastria getting that Chilling Nay ability activated once again. So Donald able to restore the boost that he had previously, but obviously got reset when he switched out the Glastria. As Wolf's Glastria able to go for that max knuckle gonna target down into the glastria off donald's side of course pick up the ko and once again on wolf's side we're gonna see that combination of chilling nay with the max knuckle putting it at plus two attack of course donald has the option to go for another haze in that next turn and just remove that from play but if you're doing that then essentially your dust Ops isn't going for any damage you know it's not going for any potential nightshades and picking up 50 um, 50 hp damage there um it does of course leave donald free to bring in his last remaining pokemon however yeah, he's got one more Pokemon in the back to bring in, and I'm curious to see what it is, to see if it can have any sort of impact in this game, because at the moment, like you said, you're kind of tied up with the Dusclops having to go for 
the haze if you're on the mm. field you can't you can't allow this this um, glastria to get powered up like it is doing you need to keep it in check so you need to spend that time really going for the haze if you don't then it's going to be a very quick end game here so i think that's the one issue that that donald's looking at right now and also with the reggie coming onto the field the problem is see if the trick room ends then tapu finney is very very threatened by the reggie mm. so you really want to try and Prioritize taking down the Reggie Alecki here if you are Donald to, to, to remove it as a threat and then hope to get through the Trick Room turns, hope to get through the Dynamax turns with the Glastria and then have the Tapu Fini in good enough shape to potentially deal with it in the late game. Exactly, lots of things to consider for our Pokemon trainers here. Haze coming up once again from the Dust Ops. So this will be a neutral attacking Max Quake from the Glastria. Going to go into that Tapu Fini that's easily going to be able to take it. And of course, special defense is going to go up on Wolf's side of the field. That's something Tapu Fini does not want to see um, as it still has yet to move. Going for the Calm Mind, however. So boosting up its special attack and its special defense. Special defense could come in really pivotal here, particularly when stacked up with something like the Light Screen against that Reggie Alecki that has been able to survive the turn, but actually goes for a light screen of its own so wolf also making sure that the defenses are set up on his side of the field getting that special defense boost with the max quake as well and this is now where dustbox potentially doesn't want to be able to go for the haze yeah the calm mind there from your your partnering pokemon kind of is a v big conflict here you don't want to go for that you don't want to reduce the or waste the turn that you've just spent calm minding now you can actually throw out some offensive attacks you can you can go for maybe a nightshade or another attack and and utilize the type of finny now the glastria isn't boosted in attack so donaldson well at kind of mitigating that those chilling nays that we've seen um activate so far and if he can take down the Reggie Alecki here, this will be a big, big turn for him. Well, going for that pain split, going to reduce Reggie Alecki's health to about a quarter. Tapu Fini going to follow up with a Moonblast. Of course, it is at plus one special attack, but there are so many special defense boosts up on Wolf's side of the field. Volt Switch going to connect into that Tapu Fini. Um, going to be... Um, not able to pick up the KO again thanks to the defenses and Tapu Fini going to be able to regain a little bit of HP with the leftovers. But of course, the Volt Switch not going to be taking Regieleki off the battlefield as Wolf is only down to his last two remaining Pokemon. Yeah, and it's, it's very difficult. You would think that the Calm Mind boost obviously helping out the Tapu Fini massively there against the Regieleki, but also the, the special defense boost on Wolf's side of the field making it difficult to take down what would normally be a very fragile Pokemon in Regieleki, taking that Moonblast plus one Moonblast quite comfortably mm -hmm. there. So I think the key is for Wolf to, to try and utilize the Glastria to, to deal with maybe the, the speed control option here on the field and try and remove the Dusclops as soon as possible and then you can concentrate down into the Tapu Fini with just your Reggie Alecki and Glastria and maybe between the two of them it might be enough to deal with it. Oh, well, Reggie Alecki just able to hang on following that Nightshade. Just had a couple of HP points remaining. Dusclops this time going to be able to take the Volt Switch with ease. And Tappy Finney, you know, protecting herself from the high horsepower, doesn't want to take any additional damage. And being able to regain a little bit of HP with something like the Leftovers is going to help it out. But as you saw, Trick Room ends now. And this is Reggie Alecki's favorite environment to be in. But just due to the defenses on Donald's side, I don't think it's going to be enough with just a Volt Switch to pick up a KO against that Tappy Finney. No, unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be, and I, I don't know. This uh, This is what it will come down to, whether or not Reggie Alecki and Glastria double up into the Tapu Fini can, can do enough damage, and then even then, we is is the Glastria in a position where it can deal with the Dusclops? It's not got the boosters it really needed to get earlier on in, in this match with the, the Dynamax turns to actually take advantage of, 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 of that power that it can potentially have. Well, Tapu Fini able to survive, does go for a Muddy Water, not going to be able to pick up the KO against Reggie Alecki, though, as it dodges out of the way. Connects onto the Glastria, no um, accuracy drops, though, and Tapu Fini will fall victim to the double up with the high horsepower following in from the Glastria, that, of course, is going to get the Chilling Nay ability activated as well. But what has this Dusclops gone for, I wonder? Because that could easily change things up. Goes for the Trick Room, so puts itself back into the environment it likes to be in. Can now potentially go for some Nightshades and pick up a KO here or there. I think if we didn't see the Trick Room there, I think Wolf could probably lock this one up pretty quickly, especially after that chilling Nair boost. But by setting the Trick Room up, kind of foreseeing that the Tapu Fini would be the target, the double target there from Wolf, and putting yourself in a position where you can come back into this match and really take advantage of how slow Dusclops is and maybe utilize something like Nightshade to close this game out, it will cause Wolf some issues going forward. I think you've got it's it's it comes down to a, a lot of 50-50s here and whether or not 
you know, you get the targeting right if you're Wolf, because otherwise Nightshade's going to pick up the knockout pretty easily onto Reggie Alecki, and it's going to be very touch and go whether it'll be able to, to get the knockout onto Glastria as well. Well, does Swap's going for that Nightshade. It has decided to target down the Reggie Alecki. Um, we've seen previously Wolf obviously reveal the Protect there on that Glastria. So um, maybe just trying to make a call there. But Glastria going to go for that Icicle Crash. Does manage to connect onto the Dusclops. Does do a huge chunk of damage, but not enough to be able to pick up the KO. Glastria, of course, going to damage itself with that Life Orb recoil. And I think, you know, that Glastria now sitting in a position where I think a Nightshade is going to be able to pick up the KO, Lee. Yeah, a little bit of a double-edged sword with that life or low recoil damage there because it's definitely put it in range of a Nightshade now from this Dusclops. And we know that Dusclops being the slow Pokemon, I think what Wolf needs to do now is trying to protect his way out of this Trick Room. And that is a, a big ask. Obviously, the, the, the chances of continuous, simultaneous protects in a row are reduced every time you use it. So it's going to be very difficult, but not not unheard of so we'll see how it goes but yeah the glastria looking like it's kind of on its last legs now as donald put himself in an incredible position with that trick room earlier on we do see the double protect though so there is a chance hey he gets two in the row but i think he's gonna need more than two to be able to combat this dust flops um you know dust flops able to just keep knocking you see donald not even hesitating at this stage going before um those nightshades um we going for the protect doesn't get it this time on the glastria dust flops going for the nightshade of course it is able to connect straight onto Glastria and manages to pick up the KO. I mean, Donald will be leading this set 1-0 and o at this stage. And what was quite a, an intense showdown there towards the end, you know, with the, the Trick Room going on and Glastia's on both sides really wanting to benefit from it. Stats being boosted up on one side, then hey, Duskop's negating it. So many factors were changing and it really was quite a difficult game to kind of keep up with. And if you're the competitors, you need to make sure that you're staying focused on not only the boost that your opponent has got, whether it's with screens, whether it's with stat boost from max moves, and also your own as well. You need to make sure that those moves that you're going to be taking, that you're prepared and able to take them without getting a KO. Yeah, and I, both players seem to mitigate the, the opposing Glastria very well in that match. Mm -hmm. And it really came down to, I think, the end game where Donald had an idea probably in his mind, thinking, I'm going to make sure that the Tapu Fini did very well in kind of making it a big threatening target with that Calm Mind then. You know, with the Trick Room ending, the Regilecki wasn't doing enough, the Glastria in an awkward position, and Regilecki very close to being knocked out, but that Trick Room that the Dusclops managed to secure as a kind of sacrifice these Tapu Fini to get that Trick Room yes. up, which was just enough there. And I think the haze from both sides of the field was <laughs> very, very important. And I, that's one of the ways, a very good way to, sh to stop these, these Ultra Beasts and obviously the Glastria, what we saw there mm -hmm. with those chilling near boosts, it can become furious and very difficult to deal with if, if you can't keep them in check. And that, that move alone keeps everything in check and keeps everything nice <laughs> and back to normal again. So yeah, I think both players did very well. It was very close at the end. Could have been very different. I think, you know, the, the, the Life Orb, Icicle Crash was very mm -hmm. close to picking up that knockout yes. onto the Dusclops, but I mean, Dusclops just again showing why it's such a good consistent Pokemon, which, you know, time and time again, players are going back to, to use as their consistent Trick Room Pokemon because it not only offers that reliable setup of speed control, but it constantly and is able, it always surprises me, I know how bulky it is, but it still surprises <laughs> me when I see it sit there and just it's so small and it just takes attack so well it's amazing <laughs> yeah so many defensive pokemon out there at the moment and i'm certainly feeling boosted up by the intensity of that match let's jump into game two and see what our pokemon trainers are going to be able to do to adapt into the next part of this set remember they are fighting out for a place in the global finals we're still here in the north america region finals here it's going to be my favorite reggie Alecki jumping out for wolf paired up with the Kartana, and donald deciding to bring lee a little bit of joy with his favorite of like alaria moltres paired up with the grim snarls so sort of a double dark combination from Donald here going to be able to apply um, some pressure again with that Grim Snarl being able to set up the screens and play that kind of protective nature. Wolf getting the Kartana in on out of there wants to protect it for later on and gets the dust locked here on the field. Maybe Wolf wants to start getting his Pokemon into a position where he can set that Trick Room up to help out a potential Glastria in the back. Grim Snarl going for that protect. Wanting to make sure the defenses are high up on the field. Reggie Alecki going to counter with a light screen. So raising the special defense in the face of the Pokemon that Donald's got here. As Moltres goes for that nasty plot, something that we did see yesterday. Um, and it's now going to be in a really formidable situation. You know, Donald now in a perfect opportunity where he could potentially Dynamax this turn. 
Yeah, and I think the light screen there from the Regilecki on Wolf's End really, really nice to kind of mitigate potentially what was going to come out as in a nasty plot from that Moltres. Now he's in a position to probably take maybe a max move from that Moltres. It's going to be very close whether or not he is able to, but he does so it's still pressure with the Regilecki, but... Are you put off a little bit by going into the, the Moltres with your Regieleki because of a potential weakness policy there? If you do go for that and it does activate a weakness policy, then Dusclops is not going to be sticking around on the field like we saw how well Dusclops did in that first game. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're Wolf here, you might want to be able to pivot out with your Reggie Alecki so that your Dusclops can safely set up that Trick Room. But instead, going straight for the Reflect here, wanting to make sure that the time Reggie Alecki spends on the field is put into effort. It is going to be the Max Darkness coming out from the Moltres, though, into the Dusclops at plus two, not able to pick up wow. the KO, but does go a huge way to trying to achieve it, though. Reggie Alecki and the Dusclops' special defense will be dropping. So that's going to be sitting a little bit vulnerable going into this next turn. As Grimstar actually follows up with the spirit break and it is not enough to pick up a KO against that dust box dust box able to hang on and go for that trick room so wolf has got the speed here the way that he wants it that reggie Alecki though i think is going to want to get out of there for a um for a glastria definitely and i think it's very it's difficult if you're wolf to switch out the reggie Alecki right now because you you kind of know if you're Donald that's a it's a slot you can target quite happily into but then you can't leave the Dusclops alone either because potentially there could be pain split there which could then allow it like back into the game and when it's in such an awkward position right now the the max darkness as well lowering the special defense on the Regilecki may put it in range for you know it's not going to put it in range for a spirit break but you'll be able to do a lot of damage there uh, the haze coming out though which is a nice option there to reduce all the, the attack boosts and stat drops that we've seen so far yeah and i think that's really good of the dust drops there just removing the stat drops that have happened on the field making that moltres a lot less threatening um will unfortunately of course still be ko'd from the max darkness but this does give wolf the opportunity to bring in a pokemon from the bag that's going to really benefit from this trick room environment um of course as well you know making that moltres a little less scary um just does enable him to be able to pick up some really good damage going for the vault switch into the grim snarl like you mentioned earlier he doesn't want to potentially set off a weakness policy on that moltres particularly as there's no more hazing dust cups on the field to remove those boosts yeah now you can really take advantage of going for those max darkness for these next few turns if you want to decide to go for those those stat drops and maybe take advantage of things that way but you've also got the potential to get a berserk activation here on the Moltres that we've seen be it do in previous games and if that happens then you know you don't have the like you say the haze to remove that anymore the the Dusclops and the speed control element from Wolf's side of the field have been removed well, Wolf has got his Tapu Fini and the Regieleki out on the field. We can actually see all four of his Pokemon here. There is not a Glastria to be found. Um, Tapu Fini, of course, could be in a position where it maybe wants to go for something like a Calm Mind, start boosting up its own special defenses. Um, of course, behind the light screen as well that Wolf's Regieleki set up previously, um, it can be in a relatively safe position to do so. And then being at obviously plus one as well with its special attack, it can start threatening some pressure against the rest of Donald's team. But light screen coming out from the Grim Snarl as well, kind of playing Wolf at his own game here knowing there's a special attack on the opposing side of the field. Moltra is going to go for the Max Darkness once again into the Reggie Lecky that is actually able to survive. Special defenses will be dropping there on Wolf's side of the field, so that's something he needs to be able to calculate, making sure that he is going to be able to survive any of these special attack moves coming his way. Tapu Finney going for that Moonblast, however, going to connect into the Grim Snarl, do a huge chunk of damage, but not enough to pick up the KO. No, not quite enough, but we do see the double up into the Grim Snarl here to remove that support option for Donald from the field. And I think it, it does come back to maybe not wanting to attack into that Moltres, especially when it's in its Dynamax form in case there is a weakness policy there. Because, like I say, if you do activate that, then things will get very difficult very quickly, especially in its Dynamax form. And even if you've got things like Regieleki out on the field, Moltres, Glaring Moltres is so defense, special defensively bulky. Mm. You know, it's not going to be worried about taking a Volt Switch potentially from something like Regieleki, especially behind a light screen that we've just seen set up. Yeah, I mean, that could have been so risky there for Wolf. You saw that the Grim Snarl only survived at about 5 HP. If that Moonblast had been able to connect, obviously the Vault Switch would have redirected into the Moltres and then potentially activated that Weaver's policy. So in a way, very lucky for Wolf that the Grim Snarl was able to survive. Um, there is, however, now a Glastria out of the field for Donald. Yeah, and we, we still have... Wolf still has access to his Dynamax turn. So Donald's has ended. He's got some good returns on them. He's got decent damage off and he's disrupted wolf enough but now it's it's gonna be wolf's turn and it's gonna be back kind of 
back onto Donald to see how well he can manage these Dynamax turns from what is going to be Dynamax Cortana coming out here from Wolf side of the field. Yeah, Wolf once again going for that kind of later game at Dynamax and having that Cortana on the field, this is something that's certainly a formidable Pokemon. It can apply a lot of pressure um, to something like that Glastria as well. Um, maybe trying to get something like a Max Knuckle off um, to be able to boost up the attack stat even further. Glastria sitting a little bit vulnerable with its special defense and defense weakened as well from that um, close combat. Moltres, however, now that it's not Dynamax, can go for those status moves once again and wants to boost right back up with a nasty plot that it doesn't have to worry about a potential Dusclops coming in with Haze. Glastria is actually going to be targeted down by the Moonblast of that Tapu Finian. Glastria takes a special attack drop, which I don't think it's going to worry about too much. The Tapu Finian, I'm sure, will be proud of itself. Max still spite being the move followed up from the Cortana into Glastria, manages to get the KO, boosting the defenses up on Wolf's side of the field, and of course, getting that beast boost up onto the Cortana, going to be putting it at a plus one attack. Yeah, really nice play there to get rid of the Glastria quite quite quickly because in the Trick Room environment, it's not something you really want to have to be dealing with even when it's not got the potential to Dynamax. You can see with the Life Orb how much damage it's doing. And now the big threat comes onto the field here from Donald as he is bringing that Dusclops. It was so effective for him in game one. Next to that Moltres is just powered up with what we saw in a nasty plot. Yeah, exactly. Moltres once again looking really quite formidable on the field, and that's something the Wolf has to be really cautious of. Um, you know, it can go for those flying type moves into the Cartana and deal a huge chunk of damage. Dusclops, however, still in this trick room environment, very happy to be going for that Nightshade, weakening the Cartana even further. Tappy Finney going for that Moonblast, however, going to, of course, target down the Moltres, deal good damage. You know, the dark typing on that Moltres is going to be difficult. Will, however, activate up the weakness policy so the special attack and attack boosting right up and as well activate the berserk ability on moltres and special attack really is sky high i think it's that plus four now going for that fiery wrath picks up the ko against the cartana goes into tapu finney of course it's not going to be super effective against tapu finney and there are some boosts up on one side of the field but if wolf is unable to remove this moltres from play it's going to be absolutely terrifying yeah i, I the thing is with the moltres now it's in a little bit of an awkward spot because it's obviously threatened under Trick Room from the Tapu Fini that under speeds it, outspeeds it in Trick Room. And then outside of Trick Room, the Regieleki's there and will pressure the knockout here with uh, any sort of electric type attack that could come out. So maybe if you're Donald, you utilize Dusclops here to pick up the knockout onto the Regieleki and then deal with the, the Tapu Fini after that's gone down. Yeah, I think if you're Donald, like you said, you have to be very aware of the speed tiers and who moves after who. So going for the protect there on the Moltres, just saving it from that Regieleki, I think was very wise. It allows Dusclops the ability to go for that Nightshade, target down the Regieleki, remove it from the field so that Moltres can be the faster going into this next turn. Um, of course, Tappy Finney still looking... Um, I mean, relatively healthy at this stage, um, but something like the Dusclops taking away that 50 HP, the Moltres being able to deal some good damage as well at plus four. I don't know if there's a lot that Tappy Finny can really do to take down these Pokemon. Dusclops so bulky, and you can see how much it took from that Moonblast. It's going to be able to take a couple more of those while still always doing 50 HP damage with those Nightshades. Yeah, and we see the Moonblast come out here before that Moltres now. We're not going to allow it to get an attack off before. It does go down, unfortunately, but then it comes down to an end game with the Dusclops again as, you know, Donald making that great decision mm. to get the Trick Room up once again. So he's in a, he's got the speed advantage going into the, the last few turns of this, this game or the really crucial part of this game. But Tapu Fini still not out of the, you know, it's still got access to maybe boosting. It's got access to things like Muddy Water, Moonblast that it can take advantage of so it's not over yet and tapu finney not one of the the top used pokemon for no reason here yeah, it's just whether or not <laughs> you can manage the dusclops well enough in these trick room turns and make the most of them well, Dusclops going for the first Nightshade here. Tapu Fini going to go for that Moonblast targeting back into it. Takes it below 50% damage. Reflect is wearing off as well, but we don't have to worry about that too much with the Pokemon that is still on the field. You can see Donald just locking straight away into that Nightshade once again, targeting down straight into that Tapu Fini. It is going to be enough, though, to be able to pick up the KO. Not able to hang on by a couple of HP, and Donald is able to close out this game. He will be advancing into the Global Final.